Parse Productions here with the middle seven for the semifinals at Maiden Shade of the Parse Championships. This is a fun one here. We got a good battle brewing up here. Uh, three of our competitors, Terry Roethlisberger, K. Rob, Meg, are all tied at four down, and Jared just won back at three down. We got Ben Kroll here on the mic. With Derek Saar, and we got an exciting one for you guys as we jump into hole eight here. Uh, it plays uphill, I'd say it plays about 280 to 300 feet, dead straight. You can see the basket off the tee, but it honestly tunnels up towards the end, as you can see here. And ending too far left or right early is it a lot of trouble. Yeah, and this is a, a very tricky shot for these guys. You're trying to hit that, that tunnel halfway down the fairway, throwing uphill, trying to get your disc to flip a little bit. Terry gets a good release, and, and she should be putting there. Yeah. But uh, if you go right or left, it's really bad. You can get some nasty kicks in here as well, too. Most of these guys are probably throwing mid-range. Oh, Jerry looks like he pulled it just a little bit. Yeah, but you can hear the wind whipping still here as we mm -hmm. talked about it last half or last part of the round. Yeah, these open holes, something like this, you know, I believe they have a tailwind here playing this one. And here, here's the highway over here to the <laughs> side, and, and that's why it's so windy here. Everything's just really open. K Rob with that oh. late flip and nice little touch off the tree. Thank you, sir. Yeah, what a kiss. Nice. That was awesome. Yeah, I like these tee pads here. You can they, they advertise a lot of the local businesses here. I think it works really well with the way this course works. Meg jumping back out to the middle. Didn't get quite the push he wanted. Probably has a jumper. Jared has a bit of a tricky upshot here. With a little patent pending. And it's tight. Gets around. Uh, should be should be up and down from there. That's what he wanted. And this is a difficult hole as well because, like you said, it's so late. Uh, the tunnel is so late down the fairway that it's hard to control the angle of the disc as it hits this kind of a dead spot here. And the disc slides up. And it does kind of fall away from the hole left or right to left as well, too. So it does finish for these righties. A little hyzer easy. And Meg, that putt, though. It pushed back a little oh. bit. <laughs> uh, I've seen a little action out of these baskets so far. Uh... I don't think we've seen anything too bad from them, but uh, a little bit more action than you want to see when your disc is going dead center like that. Yeah, the chains are just a little light on these disc kings, um, but for the most part, they, they catch the dead center putts pretty pretty well. They, get, like you said, get a little bit of action sometimes, but... <laughs> and Terry making easy work as well, too. Those are some good putts for their birdies. Uh, I think K-Rob's parked, so Jerry's going to have to come up <laughs> here and, and try to save his par, but... Uh, his putting stroke looked good on the last one. Let's see if he can keep it up. Yeah, he definitely found his rhythm for his putt. Oh, yeah. Yep, solid. You know, it's not a birdie, but that's a, a good up and down from where he was. Yeah, par even feels pretty good on this hole just because it is such a difficult angle to control. But yep. these competitors made it look quite easy. That is a 10-year buzz. That is a nice buzz. That is buzz. a sweet angle, too, yeah. on that camera shot. Oh, man. Jared losing a stroke. Uh, he's, a, he's a fighter, though, man. He's a competitor. He's going to want to get some of these birdies coming in here. Uh, hole 9, 265-foot par 3. Kind of a tricky shot. You're going halfway uphill, and then the, dis or then the, the slope's really hard downhill. And uh, if you go too far, you get into those, that tall grass, hard to find a disc. And there's usually a lot of wind on this side of those trees. So we'll see what that wind's doing once it uh, gets over the, the hill there. I'm a bit surprised with Terry throwing the forehand here. It's a tough angle to control because you're right. It does fall off very hard right at the end. Yeah, and he's getting pulled hard by that wind too. So it's probably slightly heady or even left to right from where they're playing from. But uh, he's safe. He'll have a, maybe even a long jumper from there. Okay, Rob. Stepping up. He's going to be throwing that straighter shot, kind of the more conventional route. 
He's a very good putter thrower, but it is very tricky. It is a very touchy tunnel there. And again, you have to be very touchy on the shot because as soon as it starts going downhill, you're going far. And if it just an already headed there. You have to throw nose up because you're throwing uphill, and then it goes just downhill. And with a nose up angle downhill, that's just going to fade out. Yeah, that's why I like that hyzer flip. Try to get the disc right on Annie's. It's hitting the top of the hill and just getting it slowing down as well, too. But again, that is very tough to do that. Meg hitting a tree as well, too. Again, those two trees that k -Rob and Meg hit are the two trees you got to beat that make that fairway. Yeah, and Jared seeing those shots is absolutely thinking he can get this. Yep, he knows he can pick a stroke up here. Making a disc change, might have felt something in the wind. A little too much Annie, but that kick might have been favorable. Yeah. And I would say so. He's got a, a good sized putt, but about 28 to 32 feet. Great spot to be on this hole, that's for sure. And you can see those little blue baskets. Uh, Craig Stenzel, one of the Parse Productions members, he uh, put these blue baskets in for some short holes. Uh, kind of funny, they're the old baskets that used to be out here, the, the Fleet Farm style baskets. Meg leaving a little meat left on the bone. Yeah, playing, ending up short in this hole makes the upshot very difficult with that sloping green slipping away from you as you throw up. And it looked like you had a little wind bounce there, but you should be tapping in that three pretty easy. And again, Jared has a good opportunity here to pick up a stroke, uh, being bottom of the box right now. And that wind is just whipping. Yeah, you can see the cameraman's shirt there just really moving. This wind is, <clears throat> this hole gets very, very tricky. Yeah, that's, that's our sure. that's our catch cam, Chris Lundquist there. Oh. oh, that felt so good. Again, wind probably kept it up, plus it pushed it back a little bit too, I bet. Maybe left or right here. Great putt. Again, he's just solid on the, on the, on the <laughs> golf greens here. He, he doesn't miss many. Yeah, those P2s that he puts with are quite stable, and a lot of times the wind doesn't affect those P2s too much. Yeah, it could be a benefit for sure. There you can see the openness of the area that they're playing where the wind really picks up on these holes. Yeah, I'd say this is probably one of the windier parts of the, the course for sure. You know, the ending holes are pretty windy as well, too. So we'll see how much that affects these competitors. Jared with that throw. <laughs> he always opens his mouth right when he throws, just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I always love those hug faces. A difficult birdie to get as everybody pars out there. Mm -hmm. Jumping into hole 10 here. Difficult par four. Plays over 400 feet. A lot of people love to play the roller here, getting below these branches that we're just flying through here. And you have to have a lot of speed control as the basket goes downhill and the, it's all dirt here. So there's a lot of action on the green and it falls away as well. It's a, it's a tricky par four. Yeah, I wish I could say that there was an easy route to go here and just get an easy pitch up and down for your three. But with that difficult green that slopes down the whole way, there's not an easy up and down from anywhere on this on this hole on this fairway but you do want to be in the fairway if you're not in the fairway you're gonna have a very difficult time trying to get your three yeah i've seen rollers sidearms big hyzers i've seen it all on this tee okay i'm going for that mid-range roller it looks like and that can be a tough spot to be in he is left of the fairway in short uh, I do like being left if I'm going to be short, but it, if you're in that, that group of trees, it's difficult. A rare Meg forehand here. And that was a good shot. It had a, got a lot of potential. It was just starting to lift a little bit. And as long as you're not too snug up on that tree, you should be able to get up and down. Looks like Jared's opting for a roller as well. And you can get all the way to the pin with a roller here if you get it on the right angle. This looks pretty good. 
Yeah, Jared. Yeah, he can actually see the basket from there. Makes this upshot a lot easier. Maybe he'll have a long jumper. This is that left side you were talking about. It gets a little tricky. Yep, you can see a couple baskets over here. That is uh, hole four coming back up the hill. Oh. And that is a great shot by K-Rob. Getting a little bit of tree. Oh, wow. Still going to have a tough, tough putt from there, but he gave himself a chance. Yeah, very impressive. They gave himself a look for a birdie from there. Yeah, tough stand still. Terry deciding forehand or backhand. Looks like he's going with the backhand. And this looks like one of his Lunas. He throws these very well. You almost want to get a little touch off the top of the hill there, but he hits one of those trees, and that makes this for a difficult putt for him. I believe that is a Rhino. Oh, leaving it a bit short. Meg laying up. Yeah, he wasn't even going for that. Yeah, taking his medicine, that's sometimes the best play. Especially when you see you know, Jared being this close for an eagle attempt. I... Yep, Jared laying up as well. Yeah, those are smart plays. Sometimes it's difficult to do when you're in the heat of the moment. Terry wanting this three. He won't be laying up here, that's for sure. Oh. So pure. I mean, yep. I think that sticks without the chains there. Yeah. Just dropping it in a bucket. <laughs> what a great putt. K Rob hoping to follow suit here. This would be quite an amazing birdie. Mm, he was so close on that. He know he wanted it. And Jared with the tap in three. <laughs> Making easy work. Uh, Meg might even give him a little bit of crap for laying <laughs> up. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are very good friends. Yeah, I think these guys are talking about the next hole. It's, uh, there's a tree that's down, makes it for a difficult shot. Yep. There's a cool action of uh, Jared's roller. Look at that, Terry taking the lead here. Again, two of these competitors will move on to the finals at Blue Ribbon Pines. Don't forget about that. And hole 11, 423 feet if it wasn't tricky enough already. You could see us take the wide route here because there's a tree down on the left side. And uh, a lot of players would usually go on the inside route because this outside route is not easy and it makes for a lot longer of a hole. Par four, used to be able to get it. I'm not sure if you really can now. Yeah, so, uh, you know, my good friend Taylor Lupton has taken the sidearm inside right where that tree is and has parked it a foot away. But like you said, that tree being down, this makes it a very, very difficult shot. Yeah, and that line is still there. This is probably where most players are going to be playing. And that is not easy. A great kick. Should still be able to get his, his up and down for a three from there. But uh, yeah, I have seen players still throw that forehand and give themselves an opportunity to get all the way there. But uh, it's not easy. As you can see, that is a big tree. <laughs> yeah, and I believe these competitors will be having a headwind off the tee here. That is a great hyzer wow. flip, and Carib is one of the best at the hyzer flip game. Yeah, it looks like it's a shrike. Ooh, that is unfortunate, though. He looks like he <laughs> might be on the side of that... Uh, I don't even know what you would call <laughs> gazebo, that. Gazebo, maybe? Yeah, yeah old something. gazebo or something. <laughs> I, I don't know, but that might make for a difficult shot from there. Oh, whew. Meg Dang. getting lucky, kind of like Jared did, popping out. This is Terry from the left side of the fairway going for another forehand. Wow. Little lucky, but uh, he gave it an opportunity to get up there, and he's got about 28 foot putt now. Very smooth hyzer, but I think you got a little bit of tree. Um, if you're not gonna, if you don't go up high and wide, you have to beat some limbs for sure. Jared, 
good forehand. Yep, you can see there was a better line for a forehand to get all the way to the hole. Oh no. Yeah, like you said, very unfortunate for K-Rob here. If anyone can do it, though, he's got a good patent pending game and a good Anheuser game. Uh, not quite the angle he wanted. It landed close to the basket and then rolled to about 35, 40 feet. Such a difficult upshot from there. Again, we're very exposed at this part of the course, and this wind is probably whipping for these guys right now. A lot of distractions with the cars driving by as well, too. <laughs> And hopefully no red ones go by. Oh, you saw his putter just stand up right there. Yeah, he tried to keep it on Heiser, and it actually flipped up and went straight for him. Care with a good spinner. Uh, I think he can give this a good opportunity. A few missed jumpers from K-Rob is pretty... You don't, don't expect him to miss those ones. Oh, nice putt. Terry. Yeah, that was a very good up and down. That stands so forehand. Yeah, wow. I'm, it's, it's really cool to see Terry's putt just can it. You know, it, it, it is always falling down into the basket every time. Yep, absolutely. Jared, probably from about 16 feet, got a little bit of a roll away after it's just landed. I think he's going to have a headwind putt back. It's probably the same one that pushed him out that far, too. Yeah, you can see it keep his disc up. He's expecting it to drop a little bit. Not happy with that result. He is a solid putter, and he is starting to get his stroke back, I think, too. Meg taking his time. The wind is roaring here. Yeah, yeah. he probably had a right-to-left wind. And that was solid on his comeback. So Terry will be the only one getting his birdie three. These guys are probably not happy with that as it's kind of a short par four, but it is tricky with how tight these lines are right now. That's a sweet hyzer flip action yeah. there from K-Rob. He throws that strike so well. It's so cool to see that. As Terry with the lone bird. Yes, yes, looking real good. Yeah, K-Rob's really been flipping those strikes and he's got a couple in the bag now. He likes that disc. Hole 12 here, so difficult to access. You, the play is a backhand mid-range straight. Um, you end left early and you have to deal with those bushes that are taller than most people. And in the right, you have this kind of sparse trees creating a whole nother fairway that's kind of a tunnel shot. You can also throw the forehand, but it is very difficult to get it all the way down there. Yeah, and I think this is definitely a tweener. Uh, of a par four and, and I think it plays longer than 356 maybe it's just because of that tunnel action again your open shot into a tunnel is always difficult um, and for a right hand backhand like most of these players are as a tricky hyzer flip but that is a beautiful shot here wow let's go give him a little kick out too nice, and, and he's Jared. right in front of that tree so I think he's going to have a really good opportunity here to try to pick up a stroke on these guys Here I'm going with that shrike again. Gonna just hyzer flip it up. Oh no. I don't know if the wind kept him up. He usually hyzer flips that disc pretty well. I, I'm gonna go out on the limb and say the wind kind of kept his disc standing up and getting, uh, being a little more stable for him. And I think this has better access into the green, this forehand, but he didn't quite commit to that Annie out of the hand. Yeah, it's tough to do that with an overstable disc is to get that commitment of a... Oh. <laughs> there's, there's that basket that Craig put there. Hey, <laughs> hey, you move that. Yeah. K-Rob parked the basket, actually. He'll just be tapping out here for his birdie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dealer's choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a little meat left on the bone, but 15 feet. I don't think he's too worried about that. Thanks. And this isn't a, a simple upshot at all for Meg. Yeah, he's got to throw a kind of a spike hyzer with a forehand here. Maybe a turnover backhand? I don't know. He's liking the forehand, though. I've seen him throw more forehands today than I've probably seen him throw before. It's shown a well-rounded game. 
Didn't quite get the slip back towards the hole he wanted, but uh, 20 feet, again, he's, he's happy about that. <laughs> no, he just, he, he looks so effortless when he throws his forehands. Yeah. Yeah, too easy. Jared, a little obstructed putt. Yeah. Oh, money. That is for the eagle, folks. What a putt. What a two. That is such a difficult hole. God, he just set it in there, too. That was nice. Again, Jared taking uh, advantage of the opportunity. One of the better putters I know. J-Bot. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Yeah, this is a card of a lot of great putters. Every single one of these guys, circle two and in, you're just expecting it to go in. If it's not going in, it's hitting the basket somewhere. Yeah. Solid putt there by Meg from about 22 feet. Uh, maybe actually further. That's probably closer to 30, I bet. Yeah, the light kind of plays some tricks on it. Uh, you took a lot of steps there. I yeah. guess I just couldn't take that many <laughs> steps towards it. We're up from about 25. Good ball. Yeah, yeah, sorry, bud. Uh, that's unfortunate. He gets so much pop on the disc, and just that momentum took him too far forward, couldn't keep his balance. And he heard him call himself as well, too. Yeah, very honorable. You know, I've actually done it as well, where I've, I've had to call myself on a foot fault on a kind of a kneeling putt. And so I, it's so honorable to see somebody call themselves out on that. Props to K-Rob there. Yeah, yeah, but I think they tried to let him uh, let him re-throw it, but uh, it's just new rules, can't do that. Mm -hmm. It's just got to go by, by what we have right now. And uh, brings us into hole 13, 223 feet. Uh, there's a little Mando. I don't know if you can quite see it. I know we didn't play it for the main shade open, but it is there. I'm assuming they're playing it for this as well. Uh, just a little little putter maybe. Sometimes throwing a, a mid-range or a driver into this hole gives you a little bit better skip action because it, it is a little low ceiling as you're trying to throw this. Yeah, the angle is really tricky to get. It's hard to get enough distance as Jared throws a little skip shot. Yeah, and I think that was like a, a, a fairway driver and he still ended up short. And there's a couple of spots on this green that some parts skip, some parts don't. <laughs> uh, it can be kind of tough, can kind of tricky. Yeah, it kind of just depends on where you land. It's there's some of those mud spots that are out there, and if you hit those, you're skipping pretty good. Yeah, but that was a decent release. But uh, he's still got about 25 feet. Usually some wind in here, not quite as much as they probably just saw a few holes ago. And we've been seeing Karab throw this green disc around a lot. And he hung on to it. You can see him swoop a little bit instead of going straight at it. He's probably not too happy about that, but uh, he's going to try to throw this in with that Sonic. Oh, he is so deadly with that he thing. He is so deadly with that. He loves playing catch with it, too. Yeah, I believe he has an ultimate background, which makes it him just throw these sonics if they feel like an ultimate disc and as you can tell that thing was online the whole time yep yeah we never took it aside off the target <laughs> and we got a couple couple putts here from these guys all of them want to get this birdie at only 223 feet they all walk up expecting to get it yeah this green wow great putt i don't know if he's missed one yet yeah Anything in the circle, and Meg is on fire. But this is the one of the second to last green of where it's really covered um, the tree coverage, so you don't have a whole lot of wind on these putts. But I'm sure there's a little bit of breeze as you can kind of see the tops of those trees swaying in the background there. Solid putt there from Jared. Yeah, I agree. We're going to get to a windy part of the course here in a few holes, so they got a couple more holes where they don't feel quite as much of that wind. Yep, Terry, easy work there. <laughs> Get out of the shot, Terry. Hey, quit being so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, the 
this is this is fun, man. This is a good battle. Watching some really good action, good putts go in. He's getting a lot of action on those yeah. on those chains, that's for sure. <laughs> Meg's disc is dancing when they hit the chains, man. That is <laughs> a little freaky, but you know he's doing all right. Yeah, yep. And as we're uh, closing out this middle portion here of uh, Maiden Shade semifinals, we see Terry has a, a lead here going into this last one at only 270 feet. Nice tunnel shot. This is not an easy hole. Really fun one to get. Kind of between a putter and mid-range. I think most of these guys are probably going to be throwing their putters, though. Yeah, and like you said, it, it is a tunnel shot, and I prefer ending left than right here because it does open up on the left side. If There's a kind of a second fairway in a way. But yeah, it's wide open on the other side of that tree line where the right side is very, uh, <laughs> very much trouble. A lot of cabbage. Yeah, but Jared goes into the right. Yeah, and, and Jared and Meg here are tied in that second spot, and that is the important part because only two of these guys will move on to the finals, and Carup's going to need to try to get some action going. He needs some birdies here as we're getting to some big holes after this. I can hear the tree creaking in the background there as Terry just puts it under the basket. Yeah, that was a perfect shot. And Meg with Jared in trouble, this would be a good opportunity for him to uh, put it in there tight. Oh, right into that tree. Yeah, good kick back to the fairway. Should be pretty easy up and down from there. And he threw something a little more overstable, so he was also thinking left side is okay to be in yeah, rather and, than the right. Yeah, and now K-Rob here with, with both those guys, not really in birdie opportunity, has a chance to pick up a stroke on that second place spot. Wow, let's oh, go. two strokes? Let's go. Oh. <laughs> uh, he's flying past the hole. Again, that mid-range, maybe a little too much disc for how much pop he put on it, but that would have been sweet to put one in right there. Yeah. Potential to tie it back up with these guys. Yeah. Very long putt there from Meg. <laughs> uh, a little fortunate push <laughs> back towards the hole. It could have done some weird stuff. Cleaning the course a little bit. Jared, that was a tight shot. Yeah. Uh, made that wow. look a lot easier than it probably was. Jared's not a very tall guy, so those weeds, you know, <laughs> can definitely get into his way. Can really affect you. Yep. Carol's in a bit of a weird spot from the knee here. Oh. Yeah, probably couldn't quite get the lift he wanted. Obviously, putting off a knee isn't ideal either. And as we're finishing up here, these guys are all be tapping in. Terry's going to get the only birdie on the card. Again, we want to thank our sponsors. Got to go, got to throw. OTB Disc, League Safe, Prodigy Disc, and MVP Disc. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring uh, this coverage and allowing us to play some competitive golf during this COVID season. Yeah, it's very fun to see these guys compete when there isn't a whole lot of competition out there at the moment. So... Yeah, and uh, make sure you guys don't miss uh, miss out on the back seven here as Terry's got the lead. Uh, Meg and Jared in that second position, which is the important part as we're going to be going on to the finals here with the top two competitors. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. Ben Kroll signing off. Derek Sarr signing off. Thank you guys so much for watching and tune in for the next one. Take it easy, guys.